Hi, I'm Alan Perwithis from Capstone Partners, and today our guest from the Things Network Japan, Hidetoshi Yoshida. So welcome. Nice to see you. Great to see you. You also had a very long trip to get here. Yes, yes. Two, 12 years from Japan. <laughs> My goodness. And I feel like I should call you Mr. Ambassador. Yeah. Because you are the official ambassador to Japan for yeah. the Things Network. That's right. right. So what, what does that mean when you're an ambassador for the Things Network? It's almost like, uh, the, let's see, the, the widest to make it popular of the TTNet community. And so, also that uh, some the organized the TTN, seven, uh, 33 TTN communities all over Japan for the two years. That's very exciting. And yeah. so how big is the Things Network? How big is LoRaWAN in Japan? Uh, LoRaWAN just uh, have uh, almost uh, 150 gateways all over the Japan. Uh -huh. there are the, the almost the users are like, or like uh, 110 people. Mm. the use in the TTN community. Well, that's great. And, and Japan has a very dense population. Yeah. And so when you put up a gateway, I imagine it covers quite a few people. Yes, quite a few people. But, uh, you know, that's just a very tough time to, to you know, popularize, popularize the TTN right now. Maybe we should push the more, uh, you know, cost, uh, competitive hardware, lot of hardware mm -hmm. to the co community people. I'd like to introduce the the drug, you know, you know, my partner, the hardware partner in China. Mm -hmm. I'm planning to to develop the low end, low end hardware sensors and the gateway with them. That's Dragino. great. So, what are the what are the biggest use cases you're seeing for LoRa in Japan? Uh, the biggest one is the, to see the monitoring the flooding over the river. Interesting. Yeah, there's uh, the Japan is uh, so many guy, so many cases to flooding labor the last year. Uh, almost 100 people are dead. Wow. So that's why that I'm now pushing the, this kind of application for the people. So do they consider that a smart city application or an environmental application or? Uh, almost like a smart city application. Yeah, and uh, so the the one program is the one the lower one. You know, sensors is a cost very expensive. Mm. So even the 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 people want pay have to pay some money for the communication the fees for the carrier mobile carrier. And also that the, the TTN is very appropriate and suitable for the, these kind of people. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. What other use cases do you see uh, now that you're building out your network in Japan? Uh, uh, what what other use cases do you think will be the next ones that come on the network? Let's see the now I'm pushing on the the GPS trucker, Rora One GPS truckers. Truckers means the the every all the all the, all the people you know having some dilemma, uh, some trouble of the you know have some the lost the way. They can easily to find out the, the where you know that's he locating in Japan. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Now. I know you also mentioned this other company that you have, Dragino. Yes. So what's what's the focus of that company? You mentioned they're making some hardware, some sensors. Yeah. So what sensors are you focusing on for that company? So right now, the first time, the, the one, the almost two years ago, we should focusing on the development kit for mm -hmm. the people, for the the, the participants in the, the TTN communities. Then that the almost, we takes almost two years. Now we are now showing the, some the low end, you know, easy to use the low low level sensors right now. The f humidity, also temperature, also the let's see the right now. There's a, a couple of the new sensors, which is uh -huh. very easy to use. That's great. Now, it, you know, Laura of course works in the ISM band. Yeah. And then they've also announced this week about the 2.4 gigahertz band. Yeah. Um, now, j just for our audience, which band? Does Laura work in in Japan? Which which means means the, what does that mean? In the uh, European ISM band or the FCC oh, okay. band or in Japan, there's a very you know special uh, you know, wireless band ISM band. Uh, almost strictly, also we we all take we can take the AS nine to three. Ah. Just a very special. Also, some rules to use uh, the send the communication through the uh, every five minutes or something. 
uh, very special. But so that's the whole reason you're developing your own sensors as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Because you could take other sensors, but they still have to address yeah. the different spectrum in Japan. Yes, yes. So, so if you want to do business in Japan, you better call Dragino yeah. to get the right sensors. Yes, yes. That's right. Now that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yes, makes a lot of sense. So that, uh, the reason why that the almost Japanese domestic sensor companies cost a lot, and also that uh, if the, the cost a lot, I think it's a TTN very tough to you know, use the, the for these kind of people. Now that makes a lot of sense. And plus, your sensors will already have gone through certification. Yeah. And so you also can, rather than developing something from scratch, yes. you have something that's pre-certified for that market. Yeah, yeah. Also that I'm now doing, uh, have, uh, you know, some special book for the, the for beginners, TTN beginners. Oh. Yeah, I have, uh, I wrote a book to, to instruct them to, to use the very easy way. Well, you have to bring it next time so we can have an autograph, uh, yeah, book yeah, autograph thank session. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Hidetoshi. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for joining thank us. Thank you very much.